Gamario Charleston, 34, on West 171st Street in Manhattan. He lived in the building behind his right shoulder, but when he could no longer afford the rent, he stayed on its roof. Joshua Bright for the New York Times he dropped his waterlogged loafers off the roof and let them fall five stories. Under a leaden sky, raw from a storm the night before, he looked across the cityscape dimpled with apartment lights and inched to the edge. It would be so easy to lean over and let go, go he thought. Gamario Charleston had been living on the roof of his former apartment building in Upper Manhattan for two months. He put one foot on the ledge, he said, and envisioned himself falling. Then he heard a baby cry from an open window. I broke down to my knees and cried with the baby. Mr. Charleston, 34, recalled in a recent interview, about a year after that September night. This was not the New York he had imagined when he was growing up in the Mississippi Delta. To him, the city had been appealing not only as a mecca for aspiring performers like himself, but also for its inclusiveness. M.R. Charleston grew up on the east side of Cleveland, Miss, a city divided by railroad tracks that also created a racial dividing line. He avoided shops where he said he was not welcome because he was black. The barriers were so ingrained that just last year, a federal court ordered the city to desegregate its schools. As a teenager, Mr. Charleston became interested in acting, singing and dancing. But his school lacked resources, so each morning he took a bus to a predominantly white high school on the other side of town for advanced theater and math classes. During his senior year, Mr. Charleston was cast in the school production of A Christmas Carol, as the nephew of Ebenezer Scrooge, played by a white student, my creative antenna just shot through the roof. Mr. Charleston said, adding, there was a hunger in our eyes going on to that stage. Nobody was thinking, I'm black and you're white, I was in a space of peace. For once, I wasn't hesitant or on edge. Mr. Charleston atop the roof in Washington Heights that he lived on for two months. Joshua Bright for the New York Times After that positive experience, he decided to pursue a career in acting. He received a partial scholarship for the theater program at the University of Southern Mississippi and graduated with a bachelor's degree in theater. He then went to Memphis, where he moved in with his cousin and performed in the ensemble of four productions with Playhouse on the Square. But after about a month, his living situation soured. Without another place to go, he lived in his Silver Pontiac Grand M, which he called Luland parked in an alley close to the theater, until a cast member helped him find housing. In 2007, he spent a summer auditioning unsuccessy for two children's theater shows in New York. M.R. Charleston then shuttled through Mississippi, Tennessee and Colorado, taking odd jobs. He did not act for much of the next decade. Amid the instability, he said, depression and suicidal thoughts crept in. He said he also was grappling with his UAL orientation, I remember praying endless prayers to God, can you take this? Can you take this? This could get me killed. Mr. Charleston said, M.R. Charleston taking his last load of belongings from Upper Manhattan to his new home in Jersey City. Joshua Bright for the New York Times he said he had been attracted to other men since he was about 10, but kept those feelings a secret, fearing rejection from family and friends. In 2008, six months into his first serious relationship, he told his mother he was gay. She reacted with a lot of sadness and confusion, he said, but soon accepted him. But when Mr. Charleston's relationship began to dissolve, he moved back home and fell into a three-year depression. He also spent time in Denver and Nashville but felt displaced, he said. Then in 2016, he learned of an affordable spare room in Washington Heights. That was all I needed to hear. Mr. Charleston recalled. I said, I'm coming. He withdrew all $896 from his bank account, stuffed his belongings into a duffel bag and bought a one-way bus ticket. He arrived in New York on June 19. That day, the anniversary of slavery in the United States effectively ending, resonated with him. M.R. Charleston outside his new apartment in Jersey City, which he shares with two other performers. Joshua Bright for the New York Times, This was my day of freedom, he said. I had talked about New York for half my life, and now I had finally arrived, he scrimped to pay the bills and searched for a job. But a month after he arrived, his roommates moved out, and Mr. Charleston could not afford to keep the apartment. On the day he became homeless, he looked for a new home and found a part-time job at a clothing store on Fifth Avenue. Without a place to live, he repacked his bag and took to the roof. I had been down so long, I could only go up, he said. He spent the next two months on the roof, bathing in restaurant bathrooms. During this time, he cut himself and contracted a staph infection.
When he finally sought treatment, Mr. Charleston, who was on food stamps and received some financial help from his mother, could not afford the $50 prescription for antibiotics. Mr. Charleston taking in the view of Midtown Manhattan from a park near his new home. Joshua Bright for the New York Times he went to a pharmacy and requested ibuprofen instead. The pharmacist, seeing his swollen foot and backpack, paid for the antibiotics herself and invited him to stay with her. He told her about his troubles and they embraced both crying in the store, like a scene from A. Mr. Charleston recalled, she introduced him to her godmother, Blanca Santiago, who offered him a place to live in Washington Heights. He stayed with her for a year, rent-free, paying about $200 toward utility bills each month. She became my second mom, he said. In February, Mr. Charleston received $500 from Community Service Society, one of the eight organizations supported by the New York Times Neediest Cases Fund, to cover one month of Ms. Santiago's rent. He received an additional $128 from the fund in July for Metro Cards to commute to work, where he made minimum wage. This month, he moved out of Ms. Santiago's apartment and into a three-bedroom apartment in Jersey City, which he shares with two other performers. He also began a new time retail job in Manhattan. His director in A Christmas Carol had once told him that his first year in New York would be the hardest. Now he understands why, but his second year will be different, he said. Next month, he is set to have his first audition in 10 years, for a production of In the Heights, on Long Island. Mr. Charleston had long imagined himself in New York, and now I'm living here, every day walking those streets I dreamed about, he said. This is my reality.